Well, immediately we saw very little effect on the recruiting process for Ohio State. Now, bear in mind, at that time, I believe there were five or six verbal commitments, maybe seven, and all of them were within the state of Ohio. So in my mind, Ohio State being who they are, that buys them some time. And it has bought them some time, but it doesn't guarantee you anything. So what, the way I look at this process is I think it's going to be a long, drawn-out process before we start seeing significant residual negative effects because there's so much that's left to come out, so much more to be done with the investigation that could have further ramifications down the road that could not only affect the 2012 class as it stands, but classes thereafter. So I think it's a little actually too early to tell, but you know what? Coach Pickle's got no reason to be anything but optimistic. He's got a, a fresh slate to start over, build from a new and he's obviously going to have a lot of guys that are going to be interested in playing for Ohio State, particularly within the state of Ohio. And he's had to kind of step in and rescue a couple, though. I mean, clearly that he had to, some guys might have been on the fence and maybe they were thinking about jumping and now have come back. What have you heard there? You know, I think to some degree, yes, but by and large, probably not so much. You know, outside of Kyle Kalis, who, you know, withdrew his commitment over a week ago, we haven't seen a significant defection in terms of the high-profile guy. Now, at this stage for Ohio State, they haven't had the high-profile guys necessarily committed yet. And so whether this investigation and, and, and all, the, all the public negativity affects some of those other high-profile guys that are out there, I think that remains to be seen, and that will be something we will we'll unfold between now and February. But – you know, here, here's what may end up happening with Ohio State is instead of that high-profile guy that is, is considering maybe a Michigan, a Penn State, Ohio State, maybe, say, an Alabama or a Notre Dame, you may not necessarily see those same guys considering Ohio State as highly until they know a little bit more. So what you may end up having are some guys that maybe Ohio State wouldn't take first, but we'll be glad to take because there are going to be some guys that are bleeding scarlet and gray, and that's what they need right now. They need guys that are going to be positive. They need guys that want to be there, and certainly they need guys that got to win in the Big Ten. But they've got some challenges and some speed bumps ahead, and they're going to have to navigate and put together a plan to figure out how to deal with them. Visiting with Tom Luganville, ESPN recruiting analyst here on The Fan. And, Tom, uh, you mentioned about the, the talent. There may not be a big drop-off. Uh, when, when it comes to this roster, of when they, they always seem to be able to plug holes and fill in guys that can rise to the sure. occasion. But as far as the timing of Jim Trestle's resignation, was that pretty decent? Could it have been at a better time? I Perhaps it could have been at a worse time if it came later, I imagine. Well, it depends on which class you're looking at. I think if this was something that would have taken place in March, uh, maybe even late February, you could have actually seen a lot of guys within the 2011 class really start to take a seat back and, and say, hey, how do we need to look at this? And I think those guys are being smart and taking a wait-and-see approach. I think that's the thing you need to do. I believe that's what guys in the 2012 class need to do. There's a lot of time between now and February. How long some of the investigative process with the NCAA takes, nobody knows. It could be six months, a year, 15 months. But I think the smart thing to do now is to, to take a seat back and, and really think things through and let things unfold as they will. Go through the recruiting process. Again, the numbers right now, just nine verbal commitments, not overly high, certainly not for Ohio State standards. But as I've always said, recruiting is a marathon. It's not a sprint. There's a long time between now and February. How would you rank uh, the other teams in the Big Ten and how they're doing in recruiting? Are they kind of – with this Ohio State thing and the uncertainty, do they kind of smell blood in the water? This is their time to maybe get some players that they wouldn't normally latch on to? Oh, I don't think there's any question that there's there's other teams within the conference that are, are looking at this as a, a chum in the water type of situation where the, the Sharks start circling. And, and I, I don't know how much of a significant effect you're going to see necessarily in the 2012 class. But depending on what comes over the horizon with this investigation, it's the 2013 and the 2014 classes looking that far ahead that I think a lot of programs will really be pointing at when it comes to competing at Ohio, against Ohio State within the conference because they've been the top dog. They've got the best overall talent base, the best depth. They've not only got it from the Midwest, but they've had a real strong contingency in the Southeast for a lot of their speed and skill. 
And that may be something that's tough to deal with and continue that trend. So I think obviously Michigan with Brady Hope now at the, at the, at the helm, they're, they're licking their chops a little bit saying, hey, this could be an opportunity for us to pounce. And don't forget about Nebraska because it's very important for Nebraska to become in, uh, in the forefront of the mind of, of Midwest kids, particularly Ohio, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, because even though they're bringing that Texas contingency into the conference, they've got to have some type of balance within the conference in the Midwest. So I think they're looking at it as a tremendous opportunity as well. Talking with Tom Luganville, ESPN recruiting analyst here on The Fan. Tom, uh, when before Pryor left, we thought, all right, maybe they'll go with Braxton Miller. Uh, maybe he'll compete. But we always knew Pryor was going to probably have the job when he came back. Now that's out the window. When you were looking at Braxton Miller coming out of high school, where did you have him ranked? And how do you see his freshman year unfolding at Ohio State? Yeah, he was a second, our second-ranked quarterback. He was in the top 25 for us overall in the ESPN U150 of last year's class. We had him down in the Under Armour All-America game. Now, you know, I, I evaluated Terrell Pryor coming out, evaluated Braxton Miller. Now, Braxton Miller is light years ahead of where Terrell Pryor was coming out of high school in the passing game. He's much more natural, much more gifted, uh, is able to do some things in the passing game in terms of having the experience level coming out that Terrell Pryor did not. Terrell Pryor played in the, in the wing tee, didn't have a lot of experience throwing the football, and was really mechanically unsound. Braxton Miller, in my opinion, as I watched him, did two of his games on air last year, or last year as a senior, studied him a bunch as a junior, and then obviously saw him in person several times. He reminds me of a right-handed, stronger-armed Pat White. That, that's the type of player that he is. He can bring that added dimension of running the football, throwing on the run, getting out on the perimeter, changing the launch point with him. He's a dynamic football player. He really is. But as with most young guys, especially at the quarterback position. It's a steep, steep learning curve. And often how talented they are physically will not have as big of an effect on whether they'll play or not as much as how mentally far along they are. So how much they feed him, the fact that he was there in the spring is a positive, but ultimately what he's able to absorb and then translate to the field will dictate how successful he will be. I don't think there's any question he's going to have the package. I don't think there's any question he's going to play. How much, I think, will dictate just how mature and, and how far along he comes in terms of the timing of it. Hey, Tom, always good to catch up, man. We'll talk soon. You bet. Thanks for having me.